Hi, I'm Tim Dowd with The Take. Today I'm here with comic book writer Stuart Moore. Uh, Stuart, can you tell us a little about yourself? Um, well, I've, uh, I'm a writer for a lot of different companies. I've got a uh, new book out from Marvel called Namor the First Mutant, and I've got a new graphic novel called Shadrach Stone as well. So I'm just out here sort of showing off that and those and several other projects I've got coming up. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit about the, uh, the premise of Namor the First Mutant? Well, Namor is uh, actually one of Marvel's first characters. He's, uh, he's their underwater, um, uh, sort of, he's the heir to the lost kingdom of Atlantis. He's the ruler. And uh, he's always been kind of an angry um, anti-hero sort of character. I kind of think of him as the, uh, the Don Draper of the Marvel Universe a little bit. But uh, in our story, now in Marvel Comics now, he's allied with the X-Men. And he has a new colony called New Atlantis that's underneath the, the island where the X-Men live. And in this storyline, in the initial storyline in, in Namor the First Mutant, he's battling um, a, a colony of underwater, mutant, of underwater vampires that, have, uh, that are part of a larger vampire conspiracy running through some other Marvel books. So this is part of the Curse of the Mutants. Curse of the Mutants, yes, that's right. But uh, what they did was they basically told me, um, we're doing Curse of the Mutants, take the underwater vampires and have fun with them. And the Namor story goes off on its own way. It's very much a Namor story. Did you approach them saying you want to do a Namor series and they said it's got to be vampire underwater or did they say we want to do this thing? They wanted to do Namor but it was very unformed at the time. Like it might have been a one shot, it might have been a mini series. And I, uh, I sort of wrote up a whole thing uh, fleshing out the background of the underwater mutants. Um, connecting it to Namor himself, working out the mythology of Atlantis a little more, and they liked it, and they green-lighted it as an ongoing book very quickly. Great. Now, can you tell me a little bit about your original graphic novel? Shadrach Stone. That's a book I've been working on for several years, actually. And it's, um, it, uh, unfortunately, all weekend I've been trying to work out a good elevator pitch for it, and I just don't have one. But it's basically about the, um, the, uh, the biggest liar in the world, a Manhattan literary agent, who uh, is trapped in Manhattan on 9-11, and while everyone's running away from the, tw from the, the disaster at the Twin Towers, finds himself um, irresistibly drawn to them. And somewhere in the tower, a mysterious mystic experience happens to him, after which he cannot lie. And that's the beginning of his induction into uh, a whole conspiracy theory involving alternate worlds and a threat to all of existence. All right, great. And when when is that out right now? It's out now. Uh, it's available on Amazon. I'm selling it at a, di at a discount here at the show. Great. And um, a lot of people are uh, wondering, because the comics industry, it's a big dream for a lot of people to, to work in, but it's it's done not exactly a clear roadmap. What would you recommend to any, any young writers at home who would like to... Well, everyone I know has a different story about breaking in, and that's pretty much how it works. Mine is ridiculous. I was a book editor, and I literally answered an ad to become a comics editor, and I helped start up the Vertigo imprint at DC, and then I worked at Marvel Knights for a while. But when I went freelance, um, I pretty much had to start from scratch, as you should, and I, uh, I did a lot of independent work. I did a lot of, I, I basically wrote for everybody. Um, and I've gotten to the point now where I'm doing some nice work for Marvel. I've got one DC miniseries coming up. And, uh, and I'm doing my own stuff on the side. And it's a lot of constant hustle. Um, you have to remember that the industry doesn't owe you anything. Um, you're only as good as the last, your last project and how much the fans like it. Yeah. Now, uh, for those who don't, aren't familiar with the concept of the 99, can you, can you tell some of you what happened? The 99 is uh, the brainchild of a Kuwaiti sci psychologist named uh, Dr. Naif Al-Mutawa. And what it is is it's a, it's a comic book I write for the Middle Eastern market. It's a multicultural teenage superhero team. All the characters are from different countries, and each of them has a specific power, and they're linked to ancient gems. Um, and uh, JLA 99 is, uh, is a crossover with the Justice League, DC. Um, the 99 has gotten a, a bit of attention lately because uh, Dr. Mutawa himself, Al Mutawa himself is a uh, crusader for moderate progressive Islam. And uh, th there's an animated series uh, debuting on The Hub sometime in early 2011. And JLA 99 is, uh, it's a, it, I'm co-writing it with Fabian Nicieza, who's, who wrote the 99 before I did and is now doing a lot of stuff at DC. It's just been a lot of fun. It's a zillion characters. It's a big, um, kid-friendly miniseries that hopefully a lot of people will like and will work and for, a lot of, for people of different cultures. Um, with that whole idea, because I do, I do understand this, I've, I've heard a lot of the, the kind of the crusading for Muslim progressionism. Is there, is there a kind of a hope that this will 
did you hope that it was to put it in a good light or just kind of create characters that just happen to be Muslim? Like, what's the? There, there's no overt religion in the books, um, the, and and that then and, and we don't we don't want there to be. Um, we, yeah, the, we're we're really just hoping with the '99 specifically that um, kids from all different countries will see themselves in the characters one way or another. Every character's dress and actions are appropriate to their home country, um, so there there isn't one. There's no one. There's no one type of behavior that's imposed on all of them, um, but it's a fun book to write, and uh, it's uh, it's available for download in the U.S. But it's not, uh, and, and it's available around the world as well. All right, uh, thank you very much. This is Stuart Moore. Thank you very much for your time. I'm Tim Dow, and this is Stuart Moore, and we're on the take.